Parents, I had to make sure that you were well aware that your kids are being subjected to diet culture. Burger Clown can be good in moderation, but it isn't what I'd call a balanced diet. Fat phobia has been injected into your children's shows, and you might not even know it. They're talking about weight loss. Do I look husky to you guys? But you are out of breath, and there has been more of you lately. How obesity is not healthy, and worst of all, dieting. You just need to go on a diet. I'm so sorry to tell you, but not even your kids are safe from the spread that obesity is unhealthy. Hello, and welcome to Disney Month. Check out my new Disney-inspired merch if you would like to match with me this Disney Month on my channel. Or a free way of supporting this channel is simply hitting the subscribe button and leaving me a comment that would truly make you beautimous. So fat moms everywhere, or like a few on the internet, even skinny people, because they're jumping on this bandwagon too, are complaining about fat phobia in kids shows. And we're here to see what they have to say because we are all in inclusive to hear people's opinions. We're also all inclusive to make fun of those people. Fat shaming is the norm in our kids' favorite shows and it's making them hate their bodies. Yep, it's definitely the shows making the kids hate their bodies, not the parents who uh, they see a clip of the show and then freak the fuck out, making the kid think it's a traumatic event. But Let's read. A few weeks ago, my six-year-old was streaming Arthur on the family iPad while I cooked dinner. Arthur is a safe show in our house. Read the article, I'm not gonna say anything. So I was half listening as I stood at the counter slicing vegetables, but in the midst of my meal prep, I heard something that caught me off guard. <gasps> Do I look husky to you guys? What's husky? It means I'm fat. I had to get new pants yesterday. Okay, so I'm gonna guess that they're very upset because Arthur probably wasn't a super fat, the technical term, in this community and called himself fat. And now kids who get a little bit bigger will think that they are fat and gross. I listened for a few seconds longer, hoping Arthur was about to wade into progressive, body positive waters. Instead, his friend said, And there has been more of you lately. This is horrible. What am I gonna do? I've got it. This is easy. You just need to go on a diet. Not a diet. Okay, now I have to clean all this shit up. Your ego Bowser on your rightful place. Chick's boob fell out. That's when I told my daughter it was time to turn off the tablet and help set the table. You guys remember when we were little and something was bothering our mom and we had no clue what the F was going on? Jessica, Jessica, g give me, g g g give me the tablet, okay? No more fists, just come, come here. And everyone's like, what the fuck is mom's issue? Fat phobia. That's the issue. After the kids went to bed, I put the episode back on and I was horrified by what I saw. In addition to negative fat and diet talk, the episode features a fantasy sequence in which a circus performer invites people to step right up and gaze at various horrors. Let me guess, it's Arthur, right? Arthur is the horror, cause he's fat. Lastly, look upon the leaden lump of Elwood City. <gasps> Large, lardy, a lagging, lifeless, layabout lump of Lumpiness! No, hey, it's me, Arthur! Knew it. See, I'm good at this. And the performer isn't shy about describing him as a freak of nature. Large, lardy, a lifeless layabout lump of lumpiness, the man hollers, pointing to a gelatinous blob wearing Arthur's signature yellow sweater. The gist of the episode is that Arthur learns dieting is bad, and eating nutritious food and exercising is the best way to stay healthy. But the way it arrives at the conclusion is throughout a plot thick with fat shaming and fat phobia. This episode of Arthur is extremely old, and the article notes that. I'm actually pretty surprised it didn't get pulled from kids network everywhere and deemed Arthur's lost episode. I actually agree that it did feel too much for a child's show, but that's for 2022. This show is in the early 2000s. Me being me thinks it shows the realities of morbid obesity. And I'm pretty sure at that size, he does mostly lay about. That's pretty much all people can do at that size is lay about. We've seen my 600 pound life. Where are they always at? In the bed, laying about. And just to challenge the original author's claim that it's fat shaming and fat phobia the way it led to the conclusion, in this group, everything is fat shaming and fat phobia. So I won't even focus on that part. And as like comical as this is, it is quite sad and mean, you know, Arthur writers, come on. But at the same time, let's have a heart to heart discussion, okay? People who hate their bodies. Have you not ever 
looked into the mirror and said, wow, I'm quite lumpy and I look lazy. When I was super insecure and just like struggling with my body, I didn't even give myself a chance to look in the mirror. I already knew I was lumpy. I said it without the mirror, without the pictures. I just knew. I also had very vivid dreams of me being extremely obese and people making fun of me. This is very realistic and very relatable. Two R's, double R. So anyway, people are very upset by children's show spreading body hate. Trolls promoted toxic diet practices where a troll looked in the mirror and was going to lose 30 pounds in eight hours. The cheetah in Zootopia is another fat dummy always eating donuts. The, uh -huh. There's... Oh, here you went, you little dickens. Oh. <laughs> there were movies listed off in that article and they are older and it seems times are changing, at least in my opinion. I personally think I'm seeing more body representation and I think the body positive community is seeing it as well. Disney has been showing that they are completely all inclusive and dedicated to inclusivity. We have Black Ariel, Black Belle, Moana, Encanto. We got Sneakerella. Come on, you've got sneakers to make. Yep, yeah, everyone loves that. Definitely asked for it and loved it. But you know, with this group, it's never good enough. So people were saying, uh, you're trying, but you need to do better. And so Disney did, and they released Reflect, Disney's first plus size leading role in a seven minute short. Many thought it was a movie, but it's a seven minute short. It's like a test, testing the audience to see, do you really want a main character that's fat? Hmm. Disney princess bodies are supposedly out and obese circular characters are in. You guys really like that? Let's see if that's true. So they released a slew of short films to kind of battle it out. Reflect tells the story of Bianca, a young ballet dancer who battles her own reflection, overcoming doubt and fear by channeling her inner strength, grace and power. So we will see if the world is ready for a fat leading lady in a animated series. But many took this as a step in the right direction until a new episode of the childhood show Bluey was released. Bluey is a show that is loved by many. People without kids, people with kids, the kids, people love it. Bluey! But that all changed when an episode called Exercise came out and the dad stepped on the scale and then he did this. Oh, man. What's that bandit daddy? Huh? A sound of dissatisfaction about your weight? So like I said, Bluey is a very beloved show. I actually discovered it when I stayed at Disney and it came on in the morning and I was like, this is pretty funny. I really like it. I am not dead. I am Magic Claw. Magic Claw has no children. His days are free and easy. But as I was watching, I noticed that they hit some very tough topics like infertility, death, breakups or divorces and people absolutely love it. The writers seem to be able to do a very great job of just hitting hard topics that translate well for children and for the adults watching. But for some reason, this one was not written well because of the scale and one more thing, pinching the gut. Bluey. Why did you say, oh man? Uh, I just need to do some exercise. Tell me about it. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Let me replay it for you. So this tiny scene set many people off because they had disordered eating and hated their bodies when they were little and would always pinch their gut and now a TV show was doing it and it brought back feelings of their youth and 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 Disney, come on, the kids freaking saw it in real life and the characters who aren't real. Now my kids and these fictional characters are gonna have issues with their bodies. How can you not? see it. But many are saying that this is a very real scene. Bluey hits hard topics. This is a very real thing that happens in everyday life to many people. I actually had a client years ago tell me she was peeking in on her kid. She was what? Two, I think. And saw her little feet step on the scale. And she goes, oh man, that's not good. She couldn't even count. But my client was horrified because she was mimicking her mom and just being taught that the scale always has a really bad number. So the debate, at least on the internet, is that is this teaching children to hate themselves and is it problematic or is it realistic to a reoccurring event that happens in many people's homes? Which brings up weight in a cartoon that can help parents talk to their kids about healthy eating and being healthy and obesity. And since we're talking about this and I love cartoons, we have to watch it together. So you would think with the outpour of outrage 
change going on, you would think that the dad talked about a crash diet, starving himself, getting super thin, but that didn't happen throughout the whole episode. It was about, what, seven or eight minutes? The dad doesn't go on any crash diets. He doesn't even mention the word fat or obese. Actually, he mentions, like many parents do, has no time to work out at all. Why don't you just do some exercise? Same old reason, Bluey. You kids and work. Us? Why don't you do it now? Yeah, Dad, why don't you? Love the kids. Call his ass out. You're just standing there looking in the mirror. You could be working off that gut, Papa. What's his name again? Papa Bandit. Papa Bandit? Anyway, so he does. And through the episode, the dad starts to work out. He gets his dumbbells, water, and a mat, starts his fitness watch, and then the kids get in the way. How relatable is that? They start to use the dumbbells as a race car and his mat as a blanket. You pesky kids, you said you wouldn't get in the way. Come on. Well, then he finds solution. He starts using the kids as his workout equipment, incorporating the children. Who doesn't love that? They play elevator for squat. Can I cry? Yeah, but the lift's a bit slow with two people. It's very old. Floor. Gets his chest presses in with the kids' bodies as dumbbells. They help him with his sit-ups. Then he finishes off with some nice intense hit cardio with his kids. <laughs> And then at the end of the episode, the dad goes to the doctor, oh no, with the kids to check in his health. And it's a very positive experience. No one even brings up weight. Hmm, 120 over 80, excellent. I gotta say, Bandit, you're in great shape. Have you been going to the gym? Nah. It's been coming to me. But because of the scene of the scale, which these people beat up scales, like scales are bad thing that the number really affects them very hard to the point that they have to physically assault an inanimate object the destruction of this scale is dedicated to all of the women whose lives have been ruined and ruled by it this is about me this isn't about you and because the show showed disappointment in weight, it was deemed problematic. People threw their TVs. They said they will not watch Bluey. And in the end, the episode was pulled, edited to be more body positive. Whether you agreed with it or not, there was a massive backlash against a Bluey episode called Exercise, where Bandit gets on the scales in the bathroom in front of the kids and isn't quite happy with the figure that he sees, and then goes on a little spree on trying to lose weight, doing lots of exercise. Now, a lot of parents were saying that it was a bad message to send to kids as well as experts when other parents were saying it's just the reality of parenting, really. It's a conversation that many of us have. Now, given all the controversy, the ABC has now released a statement saying that the Bluey creators have in fact deleted the whole bathroom scene so there is no more reference of weight to please all of our fans out there who had a big problem with it. Now with this topic, there seemed to be a divide. I love the people that were like, this episode was extremely relatable. Like, this is me. Why do you guys want to take that away? It's not fat phobic. It's about <laughs> seeing me. I feel seen. And I think it's not about your feelings, it's well. about being seen as a person. And I have to say to both sides, it just cracks me up that a bunch of adults are fighting about a kid's show. And one side says, it's relatable to me, an adult. And the other side is saying, well, the scale caused me mental harm, also an adult. And kids just want to watch a bluey. But you know, everyone has to feel seen these days. Hashtag all inclusive. It is very interesting that many people promote all inclusive, but they don't want to include the people that do talk about bodies and do want to lose a pooch. I was reading comments of people saying they just had to turn off the TV right when they had that beginning clip which happened in the first 20 seconds of the episode. So your kid's just getting ready to watch Bluey, their favorite show, and the guy steps on the scale and then you immediately sprint over there and shut it down because your kids are going to be traumatized. Now they are because they think something's wrong. This woman right here. I'm so mad about this episode and I don't think I've ever really been this mad, sad, disappointed about a Bluey episode before. In fact, I watched her whole video. She seems very level-headed. I don't want you to go over there and like be rude to her. Because of different upbringings. And I think especially currently, like this day and age, modern parenting does a really big focus around body positivity and body image. And yes, exercising is also super important. Making healthy choices with your food, with your activities is really important. And again, I think Bluey addressed like the idea of exercise as being something really to make you happy and enjoyable. And she even said it's a personal issue and her husband even looked at her like she was crazy when she was explaining what's wrong with the show. But it seems a lot of the parents like her are mad about this basing it off themselves. I'm gonna 
to share with you guys my personal history and my issues with body dysmorphia as well as ED. And they seem to be very scared to have a conversation about bodies. I think this episode creates a great dialogue because guess what? In the real world, some people have kids and teach them about obesity being bad. Some kids at early age see abs and even wants it and start from an early age wanting to have a certain aesthetic with their bodies. I don't think it's unhealthy at all. I love having goals as long as it's a healthy type goal. I saw this a lot when I would nanny people who had their kids in athletics or when I worked with younger girls who were athletes. And then who did they look up to? Other athletes or anime characters. Have you seen Bunny Hero? Uh. If I saw her when I was little, I would be like, Something looks different comparing my body to her body. And now time to ask mommy how I can get that. Would you then scream, <coughs> cradle your child and be like, diet culture took my baby. I'm sorry your little ears had to hear that diet toxicity. Or are you capable to have a conversation of, well, this is what we can do. We can exercise, we can eat certain foods that bring us to this type of body. It seems that the topic of weight loss in these circles are demonized, looked at as the worst thing in the world and a non-negotiable topic. But in reality, it's a huge issue. Child obesity is real. It's on the rise. It's the worst that it's ever been. And there are luckily parents out there who fight against childhood obesity. Now, CBS 4 News Health Alert and children are are having a weight problem. Another new study shows child childhood obesity is growing at an alarming rate. The main reasons, as you might expect, poor food choices and not enough physical exercise. As CBS 4's Terry Okita reports, experts say this could impact their health well into adulthood. It seems that these people love to focus on fat phobia in preschool shows, but love to ignore the blatant problem that most people are turning into lifeless lumps like Arthur. A little truth mixed with humor about obesity isn't going to hurt as much as heart disease. Disease. When I hear people talk about their trauma from their parents talking about bodies, it was never eat, don't eat, you're eating too much. If we just change that talk, you know, when it comes to people wanting to change their bodies and many people want to change their bodies to fueling your body, looking at the calories, looking at the ingredients, making sure that you're having nutritious food that will keep you full. Body talk does not have to be toxic. I would have loved this as a kid instead of my dad pulling up my shirt while I eat laced potato chips off my boobs and telling me that I'm getting fat and I should lose weight. Well, while his gut is sticking out. Now, you guys know I'm an avid cartoon watcher, so much so that I made it my whole career, and now I'm a certified cartoonologist and also have a bachelor's degree in cartoonology from the School of Cartoon. And through extensive research of sitting on my ass, I found an episode in a kid's show, Midday, that I am so surprised that no one is flipping their food pods over. And that show is called Big City Greens, and the episode is called Fast Food. So this show is about a small town family of four, plus the mom, the parents are separated, but are great together as friends and co-parents. Very, very healthy relationship. They have a grandma, Lily, and her buck teeth, the dad who was fat, but he burns it all off on the farm, it's fine. And then Cricket Green, who's the main character, who walks around without shoes. Can't you read? Yes, but I choose not to. No shoes, no shirt, no service. No shoes means no splishies. Oh, chum, I am Cricket Green. I never wear shoes. Not too sure if this is offensive to, you know, country bumpkin type people, but I enjoyed the show, love the characters. But it is playing off certain stereotypes, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't have anything to do with people that are ethnic, so it's fine. We can make fun of, you know, country people. Who are they? <laughs> They're not people, right? Anyway, and they all live right in the middle of a big city. Farm people coming to the the city, you know, that whole thing. So in this episode, something new is being built. And they're up! Cricket's hopes are up! Oh yeah, it's fast food. And as you can see, the little boy's quite excited for some good old fast food. And it's pretty realistic. Creepy mascot. Well, hey there! The Burger Crown! Dead on the inside employees. Aw oh, man, you get to work at the best place on earth. You must be so happy. Yes, all my dreams are coming true. A very extensive and interesting menu of multiple options, and by that I mean a heart attack in between some buns. Super burger, extra double burger, deep fried cotton candy burger. And of course, some type of promotional campaign to get you hooked on their food. For the first week of our grand opening special, all our customers get to eat for free. <laughs> and Cricket, little barefoot boy, becomes obsessed. He never had this type of food on the farm and could only get it every often when they would visit the big city, but now, 
they live in the big city right next to the establishment. But now that it's right next door, we can eat it every day. But Papa, he is fat phobic. He's what many of the people in the fat liberation industry would call a self-hater or a pick-me, someone that has succumbed to diet culture and now is trying to pull other fat people into the pit of diet hell because he won't let his son eat fried cotton candy burgers every day. Burger Clown can be good in moderation, but it isn't what I'd call a balanced diet. So Papa says you can't eat that every day. It's not healthy. If you did, I bet you would get sick. You can't do this. And Cricket says, bet. Yeah, I'll bet you. I'll take you up on that offer. Yes, I bet. Me and Tilly are gonna eat at Burger Clown every meal for a whole week and prove you wrong. So he eats at the establishment every single day. Every single time he gets food, he will eat that type of food. And guess what happens? <sighs> yeah. He got fat as fuck because that's reality, baby. And this episode did it all. It had the tuba music. He got the meat sweats. He's breathing heavy. Perfectly <sighs> fine. Even his friend points out the change in appearance. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, are, are you doing okay? Y you look different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's good. My whole thing looks weird when I'm not wearing the overalls. And Tilly, the sister, didn't get obese. She wasn't eating every meal, but she did eat something from there every single day. And it didn't work out for her either. Uh, I don't feel very good. Well, the dad decides to cut them off from fast food. Not forever, just for a while, because they obviously need a break. They ate it all week. The time, time to reduce that, right? The sister is perfectly fine with it. She notices the change in her body and thinks, yeah, I need something else other than this. It was fun at first, but I feel a decline going down. But the brother, Cricket, he's addicted. And I absolutely loved how they did this because some of you might think this is just a cartoon. No one does this in real life. No, no, no. This is relatable to me at least. He has a friend smuggle food in for him. I used to do this with my friends. I would make trades with them. Not that we had, we didn't have the healthiest diet, but some, my, my mom was very particular about that unhealthy food that she would get for some reason. And I wanted other unhealthy food. So I would make trades with people because I wanted to. And if my mom took away my junk food, I would most likely have my friend smuggle in some food for me. So, you got the stuff? And so he has his friend bring over, like, how many hamburgers is that? We need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I swear to God, if anybody from the fat positive movement sees this and says this, this episode was horrible. The boy, who's like 11, planned to eat 13 burgers. You know you all fucked up in the head if you're going to look at that and be like, nah. That's fine. That's perfectly healthy. So while Cricket is trying to find ways to get the food that he wants, Tilly is eating vegetables. Her skin is glowing. It's not green anymore. She looks better, feels better, and isn't in pain. Oh, Papa, it's marvelous. I can see clearly, breathe deeply. It's as if my senses are heightened. Well, while the dad is occupied and Cricket is in his room, he jumps out the window so he could get to Burger Clown. Hides in the ball pit. You know, the place where kids are nasty. Kids be pooping. I know there's poop in there. Okay, but he hides in there so he can hide and eat his food in peace. A little much there, but how many of y'all hide to eat your food? I see you. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're not supposed to eat in here. What are you, a cop? You gonna arrest me? Quick as that ends up finding him, and instead of coming to the realization that he has a problem and some serious addiction issues to extremely greasy, high-calorie burgers, he says, I'm gonna stay here because I know what's best for me. I don't have a problem. Do you see any type of a uh, connection to the fat positive movement who think that they're perfectly fine. I'm gonna live in the play place and sleep in the ball pit and live off of Burger Clown burgers forever. Just try and stop me. The show did a great job of showing how addictive fast food is and how it can hurt your body and change it physically if you over consume it. And in the episode, Cricket's goal, like many people from the fat positive movement, was to prove to his dad that he would be perfectly healthy if he ate Burger Boss every single day. Absolutely nothing would change and he would still be a very energetic, bubbling adolescent child. But but what ended up happening is it made him realize that food did in fact hurt him and obesity wasn't fun. And he in fact couldn't do what all the other thinner kids could do. I'm gonna be a burger clown and none of you can stop me. The slide stopped him. Actually, no, we can't blame the slide. His obesity stopped him. Now, I don't know if this was just a little 
jab at the rise of fat acceptance. We all know that someone from Disney has to see the, those chicks on TikTok talking about, I can do everything a skinny woman can do. My obesity doesn't hold me back at all. Yeah, Cricket Green thought that, and a slide proved his ass wrong real quick. Just as weight limits and those white outdoor chairs you see at cookouts prove the fat positive warriors wrong as well. If they didn't, they wouldn't be complaining about chairs breaking underneath them. And I have to squeeze into the seats. Everyone else in the class is thin, can put it over their lap and take notes. I can't take notes in that class. So the debate people are having with shows like this is that it hurts children, it causes EDs, it makes them hate their bodies. But others are saying it shows them that exercise can be fun and positive. It reiterates that eating healthy is a good thing and eating too many burgers is a bad thing. I personally think it gives you a chance to talk to your children about health, about the risk of obesity, and that places like Burger Clown is okay sometimes, but we should only eat it in moderation, and that things like vegetables and you know scary green things are healthy. From a young age, we had a lot of shows that made vegetables the villain. Do you guys remember that episode of Powerpuff Girls? Now girls, eat your broccoli. It's exactly what growing superheroes need to charge up their powers. Lieutenant, branch out and scout the area for our first wave of invasion. You really don't have to break out a scale. You don't have to pinch anyone's fat. But keep in mind, kids do touch themselves. They're going to notice that their body is changing. They're going to pinch and squeeze certain things. I didn't get much top body talk, like negative body talk from my parents, except for my dad when I got a lot older. But I started pinching my thighs around eight and pinching like my stomach because I noticed that I was just getting bigger. I didn't understand what was going on. Are you gonna be able to explain to your kid that they're just getting bigger? Or what if they are putting on weight? How are you going to have a healthy conversation about that? I don't know if it's them being selfish because they had issues when they were children and now they don't want their kid to have issues, but they are going to have issues. You have to be very open and talk to your kids or they're just not educated and don't understand that you can still enjoy food and have body positive talks about bodies. I think you're doing your kids a disservice because once they get out in the real world, they're not gonna be able to function when people talk about bodies. And on the other hand, I do think it's important that people that do talk about bodies, make sure that they implement in their kids that it's not okay to go up to kids and make fun of their obesity or that they're too thin or too this. But if I had a kid and there's going to be other kids that are like this, whether I have kids or not, that had a goal that wanted to look a certain way and they vocalized that in school and someone who doesn't talk about bodies, kid freaked out and you called me saying your kid needs to stop talking about their body, I would say, Bye. And then I would call you back and say, prepare your kid for that kind of talk because it happens. You can't shield them from everything, but you can prepare them as much as you can. And this is a very easy topic to prepare them for. I personally wish someone who struggled with their body a lot that I had very body positive body talk. But what is your opinion on shows like Blue or the episode of Cricket Green that I just showed you? Is it problematic or is it realistic? But also a goofy way to promote exercise, healthy weight, and of course, moderation. Let me know in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to pick up some new merch from my shop, especially if you're a Disney enthusiast like me. And hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like this. And you guys know what I'm gonna say. You do not have to be a size two. Big biceps are great to have to scare away all the boys, but not needed to be healthy. But health is important. I think both of those episodes did a great job of showing that. And also just a little tip from me, parents, you take things a little too seriously. It's a cartoon. Let's calm down. Bye. Wake up, honey, I made you breakfast. Fresh coffee and bagels too. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a bear of fun. Growing up is just a trap. Don't